I have covered tons of Arch Linux installers on this channel. Things that ship the Calamares or Calamaris installer, however you say it. Things like the official Arch installer that ship with the Arch Linux ISO, and basically everything in between. But every time I cover one of these installers, I get a fairly similar sort of question or similar sort of comment. Does Arch Linux really need an installer? And if you're looking at it purely in those terms of does it need it or does it not need it, it doesn't really need an installer. It does have that manual installation process, which I've used tons of times. Most people on Arch have used tons of times. And in many ways, it is going to be a better installation process if you want to have a custom installation. But it's always seemed like a weird concern to me because no one would ask, does Debian need an installer? Does Fedora need an installer? Even for something like Void Linux, does Void Linux need an installer? It's sort of just taken for granted that that's an option that is available. If you don't like the idea of a guided installer even existing, let me know why, but it's always seemed like a form of sort of soft gatekeeping. If you can't work out the manual installation, then you shouldn't be using Arch Linux or change is bad or something like that. From my perspective though, I feel like a guided installer basically should always be an option, whether it's Arch Linux, whether it's Gen 2, or basically anything else out there. With the exception, I know this isn't really a distro, but with the exception of LFS, just because LFS, the whole purpose of it, is building the system from scratch. But if we extend this idea out of things you don't really need, there is a lot of things on Linux that you sort of just take for granted that you don't need to exist. Things like package management, for example. You don't need a package manager. You could always just go and download the pre-compiled binaries yourself, or if there's not binaries available, go and download the source code and then compile it. We don't do that because package managers offer a lot of really nice benefits. Things like working out your dependencies for you, working out whether source code's available, managing mirrors and things like this that make it very, very simple to install anything I want. All I need to do to install something like uh, text, for example, which has a lot of dependencies, is I install the text package and it just magically does it. We could take this idea even further. You don't necessarily need a desktop environment or even a window manager. Most of what you want to do on a computer can be done from the TTY. Now, is it going to be convenient? Probably not. But writing a document, perfectly fine. You can check your emails, you can browse the internet. Maybe you want to watch some videos. That can't be done. It can be done through a frame buffer. It's not going to be a great experience and it's going to require a lot of like extra tooling to make stuff work well, but it can be done. So hopefully we can agree there's a lot of things on my system, on your system, on basically everybody else's system that isn't necessary to make the system function, isn't necessary to basically get everything you want done, but does offer a lot of benefits and make the system considerably more useful. Even if a lot of what I run isn't beneficial to you, let's say OBS and QJAC CTL, and a lot of what you run isn't beneficial to me, things like, let's say, Emacs, for example. For our personal use cases, this software is going to be an improvement. So why might you want to use a guided installer? Well, let's say that you're just distro hopping around, you're testing things out, you're trying to find out which distro basically suits your needs. Now, a lot of people, when they settle on Arch Linux, will go and create an install script. So if they need to like reinstall Arch on that system or install on a new system, let's say they went and bought a laptop or something like that, and they want to make sure that everything they've got set up is set up exactly the same way on both systems. They'll make an install script to pretty much automate the process so they don't have to go and manually do it again themselves. Well, a guided installer is basically just a more generic version of this. It may not be set up 100% the same way you would have done if doing it manually, but if you're not as picky as someone like me, it may be basically close enough, and if anything isn't set up exactly right, a lot of it you can just go and address later. Also, if you then want to go and make your own install script, Arch Install, the installer that ships with the Arch Linux ISO, also offers a Python library to basically simplify that process. 
Another thing is the time it takes to install. I'm sure we've all seen the Arch Linux install speed runs. Installing Arch in less than 5 minutes, in less than 3 minutes, in less than a minute 30. And the way this is achieved is by skipping like 99% of the install guide, setting up your install in the most basic way possible, and it totally does function, but it's not really the way that someone who would normally set up their system would actually go about doing so. For normal people going through the entire install guide who haven't memorized the entire thing, where they need to go and like check commands, check the steps they need to do, configure things, realistically it's more like 30 minutes to maybe an hour, maybe a little bit longer if you've never installed Arch before. I think my first install of Arch was maybe like two or three hours long, but I was like double and triple checking every single thing I was doing. But just like with Ubuntu where it takes you maybe five or ten minutes to go through the stuff we actually have to input data and then, you know, could be five minutes, could be five hours depending on your connection speed to actually download and install everything, the same can be said about Arch Linux with a decent TUI or GUI. If you have one of them available, going through the install process of Arch isn't complicated. Like, everything you do is the same as basically every other distro. It's just normally you would have done it through manual commands that maybe you haven't memorized. And if you just have those in a set of options to go through, it's a really simple process. I know I've said this before, but Arch Linux is not a difficult distro to use. I know there's still a lot of people out there who think otherwise, but Arch Linux only seems more difficult than something like Ubuntu, Kubuntu, or anything else out there because of that manual installation. It seems complex, you have to go and do everything yourself, and then you're dropped into this TTY rather than a graphical environment. But if you take Arch Linux and you put KDE on it, you put GNOME on it, you put anything else on top of it, it's no different from running basically anything else. Maybe it's going to be configured slightly differently out of the box, it's going to have a different package manager, and it's going to be a rolling release, but that's basically where the differences end. And by using a guided installer, it eliminates that unnecessary speed bump. Even if you're following the Arch Wiki install guide or one of the countless install guides out there, it's still pretty easy to miss something that might be a relatively important check. And I know I've absolutely done so myself. Now, it's pretty difficult to forget things like the pack strap command, installing your kernel, things like that. But you might forget to do things like setting your region, setting your keyboard if you're not using an American style keyboard, forgetting to enable NTP. None of these things are going to break your system, but they're all things you probably want to mess with. And not every guided installer does this, but a lot of them have a built-in checklist system to make sure that you're actually going and setting everything you need to be setting. And then for things where it needs to be done with your system, things like setting up your FS tab file, a lot of them just don't bother giving the user any control there and just do it automatically to make sure it gets done. If you actually look at the Arch Wiki install guide, it's pretty linear. Basically, the only points where it diverges from that are with the bootloader and then post install. But even though it's so linear, it's still incredibly useful because most people installing Arch aren't doing really crazy custom installs. Basically, the only extra point where you might diverge is with your partitioning, depending on like how many partitions you need and how many drives you need. And this is why a guided installer works so well. The point where it doesn't work, which a lot of them really fall down on, is when they start including things for the post install, because that's where everyone's system does start to diverge. Are you going to use a desktop environment or a window manager? Are you going to use this terminal, that terminal, some other terminal? Are you going to use the terminal that just ships with your environment? Maybe you're not even going to bother having a terminal installed and just do everything from the TTY. All of these things are options that are available, and you can't really cover all of that in a simple script. But everything prior to that point, getting Arch Linux to boot onto your hardware, this is a pretty straightforward process and works really well in a guided installer. I do want to make it clear that I'm not saying that you should be using a guided installer. If you want the manual installation and the manual installation fits whatever you're trying to do more, or you just like to spend the extra time to go through that setup, that's great. Go ahead and do whatever you want on your system. I just think that having the option to have a guided installer is going to be a good thing for the users who do want to use it. 
And if you disagree with me, let me know your thoughts down below. So anyway, that's going to be it for me. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.